Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I wanted to do a little garden update deal. On these tomato cages, I came in yesterday and I put these tomato cages in. And uh, I've watched a lot of people that they put their tomato cages in and they gotta put a stake beside each one because once this tomato gets up tall and coming out of the top of this thing, the wind will blow the whole thing over, break your whole tomato plant. Well, you had it caged, you either gotta start driving stakes, whatever. So let me show you how I did this on mine. I drive one stake at the front, one stake at the back. This other side I did a little better job on. So what I done right here is I tied off, which right here I'm tied off to my stake, pull tight. You see how these are not turning over? Now they wobble just a little, but that's okay. Tied right here and it's pulled tight and I go to each cage and wrap, go through it and wrap and go to the next one and wrap. And that way you got a continual thing all the way down and it's pulled tight where them cages can't turn over. And there's a stake at the back and there's a stake at the front. So that, that enables you to just use four stakes to hold all these tomato cages up. There's 12 cages in there. Uh, now this year I'm gonna be a little more diligent in keeping my limbs inside the cage so that it goes up and out the top instead of just hanging all over everywhere. And that's due to getting sidetracked and not staying diligent out here with it. So, oh, you can see we've got blooms in a lot of these tomatoes. And I put some marigolds in there to uh, help with the uh, aphids and stuff like that. They're supposed to somewhat repel. But now I want to go show you some of the woes of garden. You know, a lot of times you watch these channels and you think, oh, everything is so perfect and so... Uh, so wonderful and before I go show you the woes, I'll turn you right around while I'm close up here and show you my pea patch uh, Y'all seen me plant peas the other day. Well, we finally got two inches of rain the other night in a matter of a few hours Well, if you look down those rows You see we got peas coming up Very muddy and wet. So let me go show you the woes now Okay, y'all, right here, garden. I, I literally, me and Brody came in Sunday afternoon. Garden was drying up. I'm like, okay, I've been holding off putting the sprinklers in, but I've been using my container, my catchment system to come with a jug and pour a little water around each plant, basically just to keep them alive. You can't just pour a little bit of water on something and that plant grow. It's just gonna keep it alive. So it needed a good soaking. So we soaked it Sunday about an hour and a half. Well, the next thing I know, we come up with this huge rainstorm. We got two inches of rain in a few hours. And look at the gully, y'all, that is washed down. Right in between these two tomato plants down here, and I realize they're a little far off for you to see. Right here between this tomato and that tomato was another tomato plant. I had to transplant it to up here. Now it is doing well. Um, that is it you see right there. Um, it's lamb washed out. And, and it does this every year, this end of my garden, because this is the only place I have close to my house, close to water, that I can put my vegetables that I do want to water. I mentioned I'm not going to water peas and, and corn and all that stuff. My corn's back down there now. It catches some of the water out of here, but my little stuff that I want to uh, keep watered, tomatoes, squash, zucchinis, onions, you know, all the stuff that I that I eat a lot of that I want to, to make sure that grows well, I put up here so I can keep it watered and really take care of it. And this is the little garden that I babysit and see after and make sure it looks good well it does this every year so what what do you do i've got an idea now i tried this a um, couple of years ago and it helped but it wasn't foolproof because it didn't do it right so i'm thinking about doing it again so i'm gonna leave this gully i just moved the plants out leave it here that way as it washes it'll continue to wash out and it probably won't be this gardening season when i get it fixed but hang on i'll show you what i'm thinking about doing now it's hard to tell in a camera what things look like so right down through here behind these two sawtooth oaks 
it drops down like dramatically and then it's flat for a little bit and then it starts tapering back down. Well, right here, it kind of bolds and right here behind me, I somewhat have a little bit of a high spot right here. Now you up against this plum bush. So I'm gonna pull some dirt down from here and I'm gonna cut me some logs and burn them and I'm gonna lay them right along above my garden about, I don't know, I may go right against the edge of my garden. I, I don't know yet. But then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pile dirt against the upper side of it to where when that water comes down, it hits that and make it come out here outside of my garden. This is the reason grandpa had terses all around this place. Well, over the years, the cows, when they was, it turned it into a cow pasture after it was a cotton field for many, many years. And the terses just kind of got eroded away. They, the cows kept going through them because those old timers maintained those, those terse rows. And they were simply there to route the water around in certain areas so that they could plant between them terses and that's the way they cropped this hill area. Well, you know, the our generation come along and all them terses are having a mower and gripe about them. They were there for a good purpose. And a lot of people don't understand that. So that is, that, that's what the result of not having terse roads. So I'm going to build me a short terse road, pull that water down here. Because the water can run through this grass and it won't erode it. So, But that loose dirt after you till it and ply it. Dirt's gone down the hill. Y'all, that right there is some radishes Mr. Jimmy Honeycutt sent me back. And I ain't heard heard anything out of Mr. Jimmy Honeycutt in a while. I need to figure out a way to check on him. I had not seen anything out of him in a while. Oh, this is kale. And y'all, kale is good cooked. I got some spinach, then there's some lettuce in there. I had a couple of beets come up. But y'all, these, these are... Uh, see, that that's beets right under there. But the radishes, y'all ain't never seen nothing like this, I'm sure. Hang on. I was going to pull one of these up in here just. This is not one of the bigger ones. I just grabbed one that I could get. Y'all, this is a radish. And it is a lot like a carrot. The top is good to eat. I have eat this top, but that is a reddish. Potatoes in a barrel. So the last thing I wanted to talk about today, my dad got frustrated with the fig trees. I mentioned earlier, everybody around here's fig trees died. Like all the limbs died. Nope, they put out, mine had put out a little bit and then we had that late cold spell and it killed the rest of it. So what happened, I really don't know. They were dead before our last cold spell when they first come out. So my dad took a tractor and just dug his trees up and took them off the brushes and piled them up. So I, my heart wouldn't allow that. I went and got these two and for location, y'all, this is right in between my chicken pens back here where I've got a little a little walking area. So I come and put these things in here, and I've been watering them along with a water hose. I put two of them in. I'm going to go and cut the rest of the sticks off of that one because they're not going to put out and clean it up some. But, y'all, it is putting out. It's going to live. I have got foliage coming up right in here. You can see in there. A lot of that green coming back out. So I've salvaged these fig bushes. And you see this one, I'm gonna cut all of this long stuff off. I just wanted to give it a chance to see what was gonna put out and if it was gonna make it. And I've gotta fight the ants out of it. Y'all, the fire ants around here is a constant battle. That's some of the watermelons that we started. I had to restart some down here on this end. I was gonna show y'all this little tent I fabricated. I had an old piece of plastic and it was just coming to shreds. That's watermelons I have got in there and, and one cantaloupe plant came up. That's all I got out of them. I got three different type of watermelons coming up I'm gonna transplant. And I tried to start some medicinal herb seed but I, I have very little luck with it. In fact, this little tray here, I had tried to start um, 
I can't remember now. I had some lemon balm and something else in there. So that's the way I built this. Just a makeshift little greenhouse thing. So a little bit on the gardening deal, what's going on. We're still raising plants, still got chickens hatching. I got a brood coop full of chickens. I just wanted to show y'all some of the downsides to gardening. Everybody thinks, you know, oh, it's easy. I watch these people do it and everything just goes so well. I promise you, it ain't going that perfect for them. They just showing you the highlights, the good things. Realism of growing stuff, raising chickens, raising gardens is you gonna lose some battles along the way. Don't get frustrated with it. Uh, keep at it. When something when something goes wrong, come up with a plan to try to fight it, to change it, to where it don't happen again. Start over. Those plants is going to die. Bugs is going to eat some stuff. Chickens are going to die. Disease is going to kill some. Predators are going to get some. This is just the reality of, of living a homestead life. Learn how to deal with it. Count your little wins, your little victories, and, and know that you're learning. Every time something goes wrong, you learn from it. You realize, figure out, hey, what happened? Why did this go wrong like this? With that in mind, you can adjust and change. It's okay for things to fail. You don't have to hang your head and feel like, oh, I'm terrible at this. These things I struggle with, and a lot of things is people try to start gardens way too early because they feel like they're in a competition. Well, so-and-so's done started their tomato. They're going to have a tomato before. I could care less about that, y'all. I just... I produce more fruit when I wait a little while and let it warm up and put it in. I may be a little behind. Sometimes it gets over into the drier part of the season with some of it, and I have to water a little more. I've, I've learned to just be patient and, and let them people get on Facebook and brag about their first tomato and their first plant, and don't worry about that kind of stuff. Have success in what you can do and learn from what you're doing. Thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.